Hi, I'm Rick at Rick Turns, and today's video is... Hi, I'm Rick Morris, and I'm here today with a review of uh, what I think is an innovation in tool rest, and that is the Double Nine D tool rest developed by Joe Glassford. When I first saw Joe's tool rest here, the Double Nine D, uh, on his YouTube video, uh, it struck me as pretty neat. Uh, not a whole lot you can do with tool rest. They're very simple tools. And uh, this just looked like a pretty good innovation. Very solid with a single uh, slab of steel there. No welds or anything. And uh, I decided I decided I wanted to take a closer look at it. And it seemed like it would be a good topic for a video. Joe did do one. Thought I'd do one too. So I wrote to Joe and uh, he agreed to loan me one. So this is on loan and it'll either go back to Joe when I've got the video done or I'll buy it from him. <laughs> I haven't quite decided yet. Uh, Joe's selling these for $79, I think. I'll have a link to his Etsy channel where he sells it. Uh, and you can go take a look at it there. And if you want to buy it there, you can get it through there. Joe's tool rest here. It's called the Double Nine D Tool Rest, and it is a single uh, rod of one-inch steel, coal stamped by a company out in California, using uh, a special alloy of steel that Joe specified. Um, and then when Joe gets it, he does a little bit more work on it before he actually sells it. So let's look at it again. Um, we got a stop collar right here. If you like to use a stop collar, this is a 5 32nd inch Allen key. Goes on just like that. Joe has these uh, manufactured for him as well. Uh, but any one inch diameter uh, stop collar with any kind of a, a fixing screw right there is going to work. So let's see what the distances are here from the bottom up to the First bend right there is about five inches or looks like 125 millimeters. Then this extension right here is about four inches or a little over 100 millimeters. And then this part right here, let's see what that measures out to. That is again almost five inches. That's about four and seven eighths inches right there. Uh, usable for resting your tool on uh, because I'm not including the bend right there. So four and seven eighths inches and that's about uh, 120 millimeters something like that. Joe told me uh, his tool rest here was about three years in development and prototype work uh, and it originally was a welded rest uh, presumably with a weld here and a weld here. Um, but he didn't like the welded rest not strong enough. So he went to a, a single component here, a single piece of metal stamped. And this is going to be really strong. Okay, there's one other thing that I want to po point out. We've got a flat right here. Joe says he, he ground that on there to uh, correct some, uh, I guess, leftovers or something uh, from the stamping process. Uh, but it, it strikes me that that's kind of useful because if you're using uh, a square bar carbide tool, like the Easy Wood tools, you've got a flat to put it on. But it's not a real big flat, so if you're just using regular bowl gouges, hey, flat's not going to bother you too much, I don't think. This is called a Double Nine D rest. That's what Joe named it. And I was kind of curious to where that name came from. It's little unusual <laughs> and I asked him and Joe said well it, that's because of the two 90 degree bends one here and one here so a double 90 degree bend and he made it double 9D instead of double 90 because if you search for double 90 you get a bunch of hits but if you search for double 9D pretty much you only get Joe's tool rest <laughs> now let's see Joe tells me he is a he was an industrial arts shop teacher for some 29 years and he is retired now so let's uh let's switch over 
and see how this works on the lathe. I need to cut out a bulb like and then I'll be ready to test it out. I've got a round, somewhat round anyway, great big chunk of oak on here. Just got it off of the bandsaw. And uh, I'm going to rough it out uh, using a double line D wherever I can. So the next thing I would normally do would be to flatten the surface right here, which will eventually be the bottom of the bowl. And I would do that just like this. So let's see how the double line D will work with that. All right, this uh, five inch length here, this is about 12 inches. Uh, when I cut it off the bandsaw, it's maybe a tiny bit less than that right now. So this doesn't quite come into the center, it's close. I'll have to move it again, looks like. So it would be kind of nice, I think, if uh, this length here was longer. And Joe told me that uh, the first one, the prototype he made, this was seven inches. And that would probably be ideal. Okay, that's uh, that's a little clumsy right there. All right, cut away some of that outside wood. Let's go back to the double nine D. See how it works out. Okay, put that on just to to check it out right here. It does okay, but once again, I find the uh, this part kind of getting in my way of the way I normally hold the tool, which is more of an angle like that. I need to turn a recess for my chuck jaws. The double line D is, is definitely very sturdy, didn't get any vibration. Didn't really expect to right there, although it was taking a bit of a pounding with this uh, rough surface wood as I cut it down. So I'm going to switch this uh, around, put it on the chuck, and then we'll do a little bit more work. Okay, that, that's working quite well. Um, yes, normally what I would have to do, of course, would be with a larger uh, tool rest, a straight tool rest. It would be somewhat clumsy, of course. You've got to pull it out. You've got to move it in like this. It's not a big deal, of course. But you do have to reposition it a little bit more. And you wouldn't, and you got a little more clear space getting in down there. Now I'm going to start hollowing the bowl out. You can see I've got the double 9D tool rest right here. I normally start like this. Okay, at this point, I'm hitting the ferrule of the tool right up against the rest, and that's not good. I'm going to uh, change this around a little bit like this. Move it out a little bit more. It's about the right height. So let's continue. Alright, done a little bit of hollowing here. Enough to get my recess started. Uh, with this size bowl I'll normally leave about an inch of wood right here because it's not dry. Now I'm just going to continue hollowing. Now I do like this. If your recess here is wide enough you can actually get the double nine D's arm right here right into the recess and that'll follow me all the way down with this size bow. Alright. Now 
I do like the double 9D for getting inside a bowl like this. As long as you can get it inside, you can always keep that arm very close to the wood. The only other way you'd be able to do that, of course, would be to use a, a sharply curved curve rest. Let's see, one like this, uh, for instance, but and even it, eh, questionable. This side of the curve is just right, way too big, really, to be as convenient as this is. Well, let's see, let's try this in a different configuration here. Um, yeah, so now I've got the, the main rest located right here to cut across this part of the bowl. And let me see, I have turned it down to round. I'm going to try this with a shearing cut here with my gouge, which is a little bit different method of holding it. Okay, I want to try this configuration. Um, looks to me like this configuration and is one of the strong points of this particular right angle chuck. And that is kind of nice to be able to cut around the corner. Let's try a shear cut here. So now I'm going to try a shear scrape uh, with the uh, rest in this configuration. Okay, uh, this configuration of the rest is quite nice, working quite well. Now at this moment I have the tool rest and banjo as close to the workpiece in this configuration as I can get it because I think this shows right here, right down in here, we're almost up to the uh, banjo holder there. But this is working well. This is probably, for doing this, the flat part here, the outward part here, this configuration is good. Now, yes, and it's also for cutting around here. That configuration is very good. I think this is the best uh, use of this particular rest that I've found so far because it fits so much better on the inside of a bowl like this. My curve rest, they'll get in there, but it's not nearly as good. This gives me good tough support, good strong support all the way across and all the way around without... Um, a big gap here like I normally get with a curved rest. So let me try this again. We'll see how it looks. Okay, that actually works very nicely. I still, of course, have to be careful getting in here. Um, but I've got better support than I normally do. And uh, I got to be real careful right in there. But as you can see, I could take it all the way around here, down to the bottom, uh, in one smooth motion. Let me try that out with a gouge, see how that works. I do like that. I think this is definitely the best use of this. 
I've got about a seven inch spindle block right here. I am gonna get this ready to mount in my chuck. So you can see this this length here is about five inches. I don't actually have it I can position a little bit better like that, I think. But uh, obviously, you know that, that five or six inch length, if you include this right here, um, not gonna uh, work for anything more than short spindles. Try out the one other configuration here. Okay, that works pretty well. Here's a square section carbide tip tool. And the flat makes it quite easy to position it correctly. Well, there you have it. Uh, I tried out the double nine D tool rest in a number of different positions uh, on my lathe for both bow turning and spindle turning. Um, for my purposes, I think the best use of this is getting down into the bottom of the bowl. That was the best I've ever uh, had a tool rest work at the bottom of the bowl. And also around the outsides of the bowl, uh, I think curving around the outside, particularly the two edges there. Or you've got this one going around the corner. Uh, that's pretty convenient to have. It's not going to replace your standard long uh, or straight tool rest, but it is going to handle uh, in several situations probably uh, better than a straight tool rest or with less uh, adjustment of the tool rest to get in different areas and different angles. See you next video.